Hi, my name is Danielle Davenport, and my group's professional organization was the American Sexual Health Association. This is a little brief history about ASHA. Uh, they are a nonprofit organization founded in 1914, and they were originally called the American Social Hygiene Association. Um, their early work was conducted with the U.S. War Department in World War I whenever uh, STD rates among soldiers were skyrocketing. They primarily focused on educating and raising awareness of STDs in the armed forces. However, their work wasn't solely with the armed forces. They sought to create awareness among the public as well of venereal diseases, the dangers, the risks, prevention, etc. Um, in the 1920s, they acted as a central coordinator for local and regional committees, doctors, public health officials to combat sexually transmitted diseases. Um, their work has kind of changed over the years as issues have evolved and changed, but their mission has always primarily been to inform, educate, uplift, empower people to, uh, and to improve their health and to take control of their health, especially sexual health, of course. Um, and they mainly focus, of course, on sexually transmitted diseases and, and, uh, and venereal diseases. Um, in the 1950s, they distributed a questionnaire to health officers across America where their responses were tabulated and analyzed by the CDC and later published annually as Today's VD Control Problem, which was an annual report on the on STD rates, occurrences, um, et cetera, et cetera. And in 1979, they created the Herpes Resource Center, which was the first program in the U.S. for people living with the viral STD. And their name was changed in 1960 to what it is today, when the organization realized that STD issues are connected with other social issues. Um, uh, STDs are not just a hygiene issue, um, connected to a lot of other, like other things, of course, such as uh, economics and socioeconomic status and such. Um, today, Asha runs several resource centers to provide information about STDs. They advocate for policies and for funding for STD research in Washington, D.C. And they also research several health topics to inform health policies. They seek to heighten public, patient provider, policymaker, and media awareness of STI prevention, screening, diagnosis, and treatment strategies. Hi, my name is Sarah Vargas, and our team's topic was the American Sexual Health Association. So members of the American Sexual Health Association typically include health educators, public health officials, and health organizations that all aim to promote the meaning of sexual health. So the topics of sexual health typically include safe sex, consensual sex, sexuality, STIs, and HPV. To do this, they have a lot of members that typically aim to promote sexual health on media platforms or just in general in doctor's offices. They have a program that's aimed specifically towards the youth and to be involved in this program you have to be 18 years or older. Um, to do this all you have to do is uh, submit your social media information to the organization's website where they will send you information that's typically included in um, their publications to post on your social media website to help educate your peers about the importance of sexual health. So some publications that this organization is involved with is um, brochures where they talk about topics such as HPV, what to expect during your first pap test, healthy relationships and looking for signs of abuse, as well as some other topics. They have a few textbooks and these textbooks are usually available to med students or college students that are looking to educate themselves more about sexually transmitted diseases. As well as fact sheets, these fact sheets are most uh, typically seen in doctor's offices pasted on walls where they can give quick and accurate information to a large audience without having to go into extreme detail. So some examples of these fact sheets include 10 things, 10 things you need to know about HPV, 10 things you need to know about men's health, and some uh, 10 things you need to know about sexual health. Hi, I'm Jasmine, and I'll be telling you about the American Sexual Health Association's achievements, successes, and a couple other facts. So, in 1979, they created the National VD and National Herpes Hotline, and then less than 10 years later, they operated the CDC's National AIDS Hotline, and this was due to the sudden rise of HIV and AIDS. And then in 2011, they merged with the National Cervical Cancer Coalition and uh, they started an annual conference for survivors, um, for people who are at risk. And then 
also just for people who um, currently do have cervical cancer. So this allowed them to get together, find out resources, and then allow researchers and doctors to speak about the condition. Um, in 2019, they were a speaker on the Committee for Prevention and Control of Sexually Transmitted Infections in the United States. Um, a couple of facts about ASHA is that since they're a very well-known group and a very well-renowned group, um, they are members of a lot of organizations and they are partnered with a lot of organizations. So a couple of organizations that they're members of is the Next National Sexual Health Coalition, the North American Federation of Sexual Health Organizations, Cervical Cancer Free America, and the Boulder Women's Health Coalition, and that's the most recent one. Um, a couple other facts is that all of the hotlines that they've ever created or operated was VD, herpes, HIV, AIDS, and HPV. And then a lot of news outlets and magazines that they have been featured in is Seventeen, Ebony, Women's Day, Health, New York Times, CNN, and BuzzFeed News. They've also been in a couple award shows and the most recent one is that they were in the Shorty Awards, which is an award show that's um, targeted towards the youth. Um, they also promote health-related holidays such as Cervical Health Awareness Month, which is in January, um, National Condom Month, which is February, National Coming Out Day, which is October 11th, National Transgender Day of Remembrance, which is November 20th, and then World AIDS Day, which is December 1st. So those are a couple of facts and achievements of ASHA. Hello. My name is Jared Coronado, and when talking about the American Sexual Health Association, one might think, why should I care about it? Well, the organization has been a very important one since its inception in 1914, and continue to this day to advocate for new sexual health policies, and continue to educate millions of Americans all across the United States about the importance of sexual health, to provide resources, for those suffering from STDs or other sexual health issues. And they have results to show for it. In 1979, they created the National Herpes Hotline, which is a hotline dedicated to receiving calls from people who might have questions regarding the disease, or even from people who might be suffering from herpes and need resources regarding that illness. Eight years later, they helped operate the official CDC National AIDS Hotline, which is a similar hotline to the National Herpes Hotline, but they took calls regarding AIDS rather than herpes. More recently, in 2011, they merged with the National Cervical Cancer Coalition, an organization dedicated to helping those hoping women who have or are at risk for cervical cancer and providing resources for them while also creating an annual conference for the survivors of cervical cancer. And most recently, in 2019, they had the honor of acting as speaker for the Committee on Preservate, Prevention and Control of sexual tran Sexually Transmitted Infections. And even then, they have several books and brochures out to educate Americans about the importance of sexual health and how to prevent sexually transmitted illnesses and diseases, and they're even partnered with several organizations in the United States, including the National Health Institutes and the State of Texas. Uh, hi, my name is Santos. Uh, I went through uh, the American Sexual Health Association site and uh, just looked at the information that was provided by it. Uh, the link for the site is on this slide, www.ashasexualhealth.org. And on the site, uh, ASHA's website provides a variety of information about pretty much all parts of sexual health. Uh, it goes into basic sexual health, such as anatomy, like uh, it tells you pretty much like stuff like you'd learn in basic health classes like in primary school, 
and uh, it tells you about uh, healthcare options um, pretty much around the country and in some cases around the globe. Uh, it teaches you about reproductive health and uh, a lot of this stuff is like basic, really basic information uh, it all, um, that you would learn in school. Uh, like this is not for children but for the uninformed uh, it also goes into uh, self-image and uh, the self-image portion it talks about uh, the influence of social media and the influence of other people on a person's self-image and uh, it pretty much goes into this shouldn't matter that but it does to a lot of people um, the next section it goes into is uh, STDs and STIs, um, and it includes the type types of STDs and STIs. Um, and it goes how you can avoid these STDs and STIs, and it gives a list of pretty much all of them and the best way to avoid STDs and STIs if you are sexually active is. Um, Contraception, of course, and uh, so that's what condoms are used for. Uh, and it shows you where you can get tested and when you should get tested for an STD or an STI. It gives you point um, early warning signs, uh, and it gives you vaccine information about uh, all the hepatitis A, B, and C, and the HPV. Uh, virus, uh, which were both uh, sexual uh, diseases or infections, and it tells you why you should get them and at what age, uh, and all that stuff. Uh, the next tab was uh, sex and relationships, and in this tab, it really goes into the more human side of it, so it explains the types of relationships. And it kind of explains about sexuality, it doesn't touch too much on it. It more goes into the biggest, like, it doesn't really go into homosexual relationships and a heterosexual. It, it explains things like asexual relationships and the types of relationships people engage in. As it kind of normalizes just a relationship as a person and a person, not... Uh, two different genders or the same gender and it goes into having a serious committed relationship or a casual and uh, It talks about platonic relationships and uh, It tells you just about all that and it goes into when and how to talk to a partner about what you or they like or dislike while you guys are in a sexual relationship so it would and it tells you that you shouldn't assume anything about your partner that you have to talk to them at some point for a better relationship in the long run and uh it goes into sexual pleasure and what it is and it goes into what people think it is and to what it actually is uh it talks about consent uh it, it talks about um, sex as you age, uh, as the older you get, uh, the less often people end up having sex. And it goes into how the older um, people can get back into it or how they can do it pretty much. And uh, it goes into when you should talk about it with your kids and to be open to questions from your children because it is a weird topic when you're talking to a kid about it, but it is a topic that should be covered in the long run. And it is better for them, and it will be better for you, because you might avoid any future problems that may arise from it. Hello, I am Alton A. Braggs, and I'm coming to you with interesting information about the American Sexual Health Association. It was established in 1914 and it is a nonprofit voluntary organization committed to stopping sexually transmitted diseases. 
CDC is Center of Disease Control, Health and Prevention, and they also help back up ASHA, which is the American Sexual Health Association. They provide direct patient support through herpes resources centers and the hotline, herpes hotline, and there's the HPV support group, which coordinate a network of over 100 local supporting groups. They publish quarterly journals, and they also operate the National AIDS Hotline and National STD Hotline. They are under contract with CDC, so they receive help from CDC under contract. ASHA advocates for increased funding for STD programs and public policies on STD control. Working through its office in Washington, D.C., which also provides leadership for the National Coalition to Fight Sexually Transmitted Diseases and operates Women Health Matter program. I'm also coming to you with some references. I got this information from the rarediseaseorg slash organization slash American hyphen sexual hyphen health hyphen association. Thank you.